I have a say in it, but whichever way it goes, it's going to be tough. Yeah, let's get it on. It's Navi versus LDLC. It's the semi-finals here of DreamHack Winter 2014. So welcome to the show. We're here in Jönköping, Sweden, and this is the best of three game between Navi and LDLC. It's going to be completely packed here. Slow start from LDLC, but they do have to bomb up an apartment. I think they might almost spark an eruption here and then just go for that A bomb site in, in one second. As soon as they meet anyone, this is going to be the explosion right here. Guardian waiting up in graveyard. He's going to take a peek down. Edward with the first headshot. Guardian looking for something. It's Edward picking up two headshots with the USPS before Guardian finally goes down. But Zeus comes in to help out. It's only happy left. Now we off to a fantastic start as Starix will pick up the last kill. But Edward, obviously, the man shutting that push down right as it came, got started. Yeah, and it's good that you mentioned Edward as well before this. You know, in pistol rounds, Edward is the master, and he's playing from pit on A. If he can stay alive, the longer he can stay alive. With Guardian there to support in Graveyard, it's this combination play that just grinds LZLC down to a halt when they try and rush up short or through apartments like that. If you are new to the Counter-Strike scene, and we do have an incredible amount of, of new uh, members of the community, which is amazing, don't forget to go on YouTube and just search for, you know, Navi Edward 1.6 pistol and you'll find a million frag highlights that explain exactly why Edward has this reputation. MBK goes down, Seuss with the, uh, with the FAMAS obviously taking care of that. It is C set 75 armor all across the board for uh, LDLC. But um, Navi, obviously we know by now how important these anti ecos are and you have to hold on to them. You can't just expect to win them outright. No, no, I mean, Navi aren't really cutting too many corners here. It's actually Zeus with just a P250, which is uh, kind of surprising. I'm wondering if he ended up passing that over to Guardian if they, went, uh, if they wound up trading. But that is still, I mean, Navi not messing around. Four rifles on the board. They accounted for perhaps LDLC going for a pistol armor buy. LDLC, no pistol, no, no bomb plan. They really don't want to let Navi get off to a very strong start here. And they're gathering up outside of B, so there's only going to be two guys here for Navi. This is a good place to strike for LDLC. It is, you know, air quotes, the weaker site. It is. They have no grenades either, but uh, the Famas from Seas will take the first kill. A lot of damage done to shot as well. Oh, great jump shot from Kiyoshima. Going to take down Starix. Now Seas just has to buy time and stay alive, but he won't. Shocks will take him down. C set 75 from Happy to drop Seuss as well. This is a great start for LDLC. It's now two on two. Can yeah, they get the bomb down? That's when things get really tricky for the Navi team. Happy is curiously caught in this corner, just trying to see if he can get his way out. He gets oh, a headshot God. as well, and it's a triple kill. Happy destroying Navi in the second round. He should have been caught. That should have been a bad position as soon as he got found out. He should have been pinned down. The fact that he does manage to... I mean, this is the real power of this position with this pistol. This range as well is lethal, and you just do so much damage. Look at how fast he was darting in and out from the corners. It was making it so difficult for Guardian to manage his ammo and predict when he was actually going to peek out. And when he did, Guardian was dead instantly, and the other man soon to follow. I mean, just Happy is one of those guys we have to keep a close eye on for LDLC. There's just so much talent on both of these teams. But that was a huge round for LDLC. They bounced right back into it here. Second round win for them, and getting a crucial round on their T side of Inferno. Seeing as how it is so very difficult for teams on the offense on this map to just start picking them up. I mean, Anders, how many rounds do you think they need right now to consider this uh, a successful half for LDLC? I would act, even if LDLC only got four rounds on the terror side, I'd actually still be worried for Navi. Mm. But I think the goal for them has to be five or more. I think four is like, that's when a lot of stuff still has to work out, especially the pistol round. That's like the most important thing. I think five rounds, even if they lose the pistol, it's not impossible they can make the comeback here. Starix with a good peek out, being flashed in by a teammate. Very simple one-two combination that is well known. Uh, but it's very effective, you know, just have to hit that timing down, and that's all it takes. Edward has the M4A1 here, and obviously Navi did force up in this round to spoil whatever they can. Guardian trying to be a distraction here, and it's going to work as well. Edward, though, taking a little bit too long. He's got four bullets left. He actually gets the second kill on Shocks anyway. It's almost outrageous. He should have gone down at that point. Now it's Kiyoshima, and they're coming up from behind. Kiyoshima, very low on health. He gets a double, though, but it's a 2 on 3 and there's only 25 seconds left right now. This is not a good position here for LDLC, and they're trying to see if they can get Get up into Banana right now, but now we've heard them. They know they're coming. This is perfect. The smoke goes up. LDLC are running through, and that's almost suicide. Starry is going to pick up the double, the triple at the end, and that will be Navi claiming it right back. Yep, and this is getting into that typical brawl we have with LDLC. You know, the force train. Just, I'm curious now if LDLC are going to go ahead and actually go for a force, and they are. So this is definitely going to be a brawl here to begin in this semifinal on Inferno. Nobody wants to give up an advantage. Nobody wants to give up an edge. LDLC wants to strike right back. Back. And seeing as how in the second round it was so effective for them, no reason for them not to go for it here. But it's a kind of a crazy force. I mean, it's yes, it's pistol. Then the AWP on Smith just to just to cement the fact that they had the money for that. 
This is something LDLC have been doing for such a long time, and we keep criticizing it, and they keep, reaching, they keep making it really far in tournaments anyway. So maybe there's something to be said for uh, for their approach here. We'll see if it can work once again. If it works, then Navi are the ones straight back echoing. I'm curious to see. I mean, this is going to be this is going to require patience from Navi. They can't peek out. They have to play as if LDLC. They have to play as if they're going to assume that LDLC have bought up in this scenario. That they're going to be dealing with CZs. That they may even be dealing with a scout potentially. Something that can do some real damage here. But NBK is going to hit that timing perfect and be able to back up and not get caught. Nobody peeking out from Navi. They really are working very hard right now to not give LDLC an entry. This is very patient play coming out from yeah. Navi. But I mean, MBK even just even just being there forced the smoke out from the Navi side. So now they don't have that. If they end up going back to B, that means there's no smoke going on on that bomb side. That's good news. I mean, it's a simple thing for MBK to do. And Navi may be a little bit jumpy with throwing out that smoke because they only had one guy walking. Now, Seuss is going to be walking right around the corner. We'll get the straight shot on Smiths and has to fall back to the next line of defense there. NBK actually getting... Oh, yeah, he gets getting shot down and ends up going down as well. Shots with a kill on Edward. And now Seuss wants a little bit more. 13 bullets left here. And he is going to pick up Steel. In fact, the C-75 before he gets taken up by Happy. Still a three on three right now, but Guardian's position is so good right here. Bomb plant, attempt it, and Guardian goes down! Great cover from Shoxi. Yeah, that was perfect play now, and they have the Triangle of Doom set up here for LDLC. Time enough to get into decent after plant positions. Happy is exposed here on short, but he's playing behind the pillar like this. Going to have the perfect timing to peek out, and at the same time, Kyoshima finds the kill on long. Navi getting shut down, and this time around, Anders, the buy works. LDLC, one up, a few pistols, and they get the job done. Yeah, but Navi, they actually accept the challenge. They say, all right, fine. If we're going to play this game where every time we lose, we force up with armor and pistols anyway, then we're on board. And this is very interesting. So much rides on this. I think we said this yesterday as well when it was happening between LDLC and Fnatic, that the first team to get two consecutive rounds here is generally the team that wins the half. Maybe not the whole map, but at least the half. It makes such a big difference. So yes, the, the, the fight is definitely on now, and it's even getting almost a little bit personal here. Navi are going to be in an eco position if they were to lose this, but it looks like LDLC, they're going to walk right in, double kill, and that opens up the B site. Nothing Navi could do about that scenario. And now, Navi deciding to back off and hold on to the gear that they have. This is there's pretty much a no-brainer for Navi. Everybody's alive on LDLC. They failed to get the kill on Shoxi, who just barely lived with two HP. They've invested this much. They might as well hold on to it for the next round, but happy right now. Sneaky Sleuth, he's on the hunt. He wants to see where the remaining Navi members are holding up. Good kill from Edward at the very least. See if they can steal something like Hiroshima is there to cover the rifles. And that's actually pretty important. Just don't give anything to Navi, because you're right, they will be they'll be forced to eco. There's no there's no point in continuing to buy up here, but if they steal a rifle, they're not gonna force up behind it, but it'll still be annoying for LDLC just knowing that that's on the map somewhere and they have to to deal with it. So it's really wants it. You can just tell, is he willing to sacrifice the armor to potentially get it? He picks it up and runs away. Good job on Seuss, that's not bad at all. That's really now, good. I think we just saw an interesting example, because the one time I, I pointed out that MBK forced a grenade out too early over at the b bomb site. well, this round, we actually kind of saw what happened if you put the smokes down too late, because the smoke went down as LDLC pushed in, and that just destroyed it for Navi. So now we've seen both sides of the coin, we need to see Navi putting up smokes exactly right. It's not going to be this round, because they don't have any, but um, they do have the, uh, the, the rifle. They do have the rifle, and they have actually picked up a couple of guns to work with as well. That's CZ passed down to Seized, Guardian's got his Deagle. So let's see if Navi can do any damage, but this should be a round that LDLC can pick up here and put them well, up at four rounds, which would be huge at the beginning of this half for LDLC. That would take an enormous amount of pressure off their shoulders, considering they would have practically the rounds that they need at the beginning of the half. So LDLC pacing themselves well here. Navi went for a bit of a gamble at the beginning, kind of stacking up on B, and they continue to try and bait Happy out. This is all to get him so close to Seize that the Seaside will insta-kill him. Meantime, Max Bird, Archway, Happy still taking this fight. He's very, very low on health, but in the meantime, the A bomb site is being lost in the background here. Star is doing a valid, a brave job here, but he's going to go down at the end. Shots will drop him, and it's down to Guardian and Seize here. Two on two as they pick up that kill, but retaking the bomb site is going to be immensely difficult. Well, unless they hit the perfect timing. Unfortunately, Guardian can't hit the Deagle shot. And Kyushima manages to dart into Boiler. That buys a little bit of time. Seize is hot on his heels, however. And they, have, they do have the remaining LDLC members boxed into this site now, Navi. The question is, do they decide to back off with the swag? I mean, they've got an AWP. That's a huge find there. Seized with that sniper rifle, he's going to be able to give that over to Guardian, and that's going to save a lot of money for Navi, as well as the M4 picked up. I mean, this is a great find and a great decision here by Navi. No reason to take the fight and risk the guns that they have here. And you have to wonder if this is going to make the difference for the 
for the Navi side. AWP on Guardian to point out he has killed nobody in this match yet, which means, you know, if this is going to be his way to get back in the game, that is going to make a really big, big, big difference. LDLC are off to a strong start on this, on this side. If they win one more round, that's when Navi really need to be worried. If they win more than that, then that's when the map actually starts slipping away really quickly. Exactly. Not a 9-6 finish would just not cut it for Navi. They desperately need to just shut them down right here and then carry the rest of this half forward. Navi, now, they do have the full buy going into this, and Guardian does have that trusty AWP. Smith's going for a clever counter boost, however, and he does find the entry frag. Guardian is gone off the map. We hyped them up, and we may have cursed them, Anders. But it's great pick from LDLC. They, they figured, we know he's stolen the AWP and run away with it somewhere. Where's the likely spot? Could be Banana in this very common, so we just counter boost it and get ready for it. Uh, so that's just very intelligent play from LDLC, no doubt about that. Unfortunately for Guardian, that wasn't going to be his moment to get uh, to get into the game just yet. Seize wants to get over here, see if he can steal it, but now he's trapped behind the Molotov. Not exactly an ideal position, but he's going to play it cool and just stay safe here. Four out of five can still be done for Navi. Oh, the fresh smoke to go down here, and Seize will actually be just fine. Scenario, however, they are out pretty practically out of nades across the map right now. Navi only a handful to work with still, and LDLC just keep getting closer and closer to these sites. Flash up short here, LDLC. Just trying to cause a bit of a diversion, trying to sell a fake, seeing as how it is going to be a V push here eventually. The bomb is making its way up, banana. Everybody gathering up here for LDLC, and they still have the necessary nades. I mean, they have three smokes. They can completely smoke up this site, and they even have the Molotov on NBK. This is going to make it very difficult here for Navi to hold. Grenade comes out there. Great angle from Seize, and Starish will pick up a kill. LDLC kind of slowing down a little bit too much here. Starish sprays down, gets another kill before he runs out of bullets. It's up to Happy, and he's going to get the one kill in. That was a one on three, now it's a one on two, and he's going to get the time to put the bomb down here. The smoke covering just a little bit. Can he get the AK out in time? He's trying to fall back, and he will make it into construction. Now, that's a big deal. Now, Seuss and Andrew would have to try and figure out a way to really work well together. Otherwise, he could just start in here and take one out who's defusing, but it's not going to happen. He's a little bit too focused on that side of the map. Seuss walking silently in, and they don't have a kit, but they do have the time, luckily. Navi, that's still an expensive round, if you think about it. They still succeed in killing three people, and they get the bomb plant. LDLC, I mean, they rather win it, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. They're inflicting damage, but one big thing here to bring up is that Navi do manage to save that AWP for the next round. So that's, I mean, that's $4,750 $4, that's saved that they don't have to spend on Guardian again. So they can carry that over into another rifle for another member. They can start juggling around with their money. But Navi's money across the board will still be low. Only, a, well, only Guardian who really has anything in the bank. LDLC, however, perfectly fine buying up again. They're going to have another full buy and everything they need to put the pressure here on Na'Vi. That was a bit of a disjointed attack coming in from LDLC, however. Just Na'Vi, they set up the crossfire. LDLC kind of went in one at a time. And that's pretty much the worst case scenario where you're on the T side trying to push into Banana. You cannot afford to just walk in one after another because you die and then you don't manage to get the revenge frag. And from there, you're just, your push just loses all of its momentum. You gotta wonder if Cease is just gonna fall back to A after you push up the smoke, because that's also a very common way of holding. And they might just leave Starix there for, and put four people in the A-bomb site. Uh, if they're feeling confident in his abilities to defend, that wouldn't be too much of a stretch either. A little bit more for forward position up in the A apartments this time for Na'Vi, but Seize is going to get the opening and Starix to follow up, and they're controlling Banana perfectly right here. Smith, low on health, gets dropped, and gives them the bomb right in front of them there. That's a double up setup now on Na'Vi's side, which is interesting. I'm curious to see how they're going to use that, but that was also a very cool play, just the idea behind it. That could have been a potential fake there from LDLC. The smoke that they threw from all the way back in T spawn to smoke off CT at the B site. I mean, that's that's usually what you expect to see right when it goes down. I mean, when, you, when you're outside in front by car, topping out right out front of the site, to throw it from halfway across the map like that isn't something we see very often. So LDLC are willing to play here. That map, or that round, however, is going to cost them. They are going to be on pistols here. And now it's the classic Navi push down the middle here. Just a little bit of aggression, something they love doing. But they're going to run into a bunch of people coming up from second mid as well. Good grenade kill in there. And they actually shut down this eco rush that's coming in, which is good news. That's what you want to do. Nobody dies on the Navi side, so great job on their part. Guardian with a double, and Edward with a double. And um, yeah, those are the first two kills that, Navi get, that Guardian gets in the game. So it's pretty important that he just starts feeling like he also has a part to play. Now they just need to soldier on. This this ideally finishes 11-4.
for Na'Vi and they just win the next six rounds in a row, which is not impossible. Uh, certainly not. CT side in front of me, we've seen how strong it is. And then now they actually have a bank to go with as well, Na'Vi. So they have a lot of money to keep everybody well equipped. Guardian as well. I mean, he got out He got out pretty good there in that last round as well because LDLC, they're hoping to be able to go up second mid and wrap into the quad here as quickly as possible. And this time around, it actually works. Choxy catches Guardian out with a nade in hand, and that is not how things are supposed to go here. Na'Vi, they only have one man on this site. They're rotating a second and a third in through Speedway. But LDLC, if they want, they can walk right in here, and the only man stopping them is Edward. Yeah, he's carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders right now, and he's going to pick up the first kill, but then instantly heads up by shots on point with the AK. Those seeds will take him down. It's still a three-on-three, -three, no bomb plant. And look at Navi, they're rotating in, especially Star and Sears. are going to be in a great position in just a matter of seconds if he can defeat uh, Happy, who's up in those apartments. That's the really important one. Happy turns around, and Star is almost with that. They also take down MBK, but this battle up in the apartments was the really important one. Now Kiyoshima is going to be alone here, and he goes down straight through the box. You cannot hide behind that anymore. It's not as effective. Seized with a triple kill. And that's what it is. Semla. That grenade that they throw from CT spawn. We should try and follow the next round if we can. I hope we can get our subs to do that. The one that Navi throws. Because I'm actually wondering if that if you notice it's landing really, really, really far at the bottom of banana. I'm actually wondering if that smoke is specifically designed to counter the boost that Smith did earlier with the AWP. It's it's really it's it's weird that it's so far back. So I don't know if we can get a glimpse of it, but that's actually really interesting. I'm wondering if they if they specifically design that. So Seuss is here. Now we're going to watch and see, and this is going to go right down. Look and this actually could is. potentially go right at the entrance to T-Spawn, actually. So it does block it off from mid as well. That could potentially cut LDLC in half if they were to try and push through there. I don't think you can boost it now. I don't think you can see much. You might just be on the edge there for Smith. This is also very strong for Navi if they want to just control mid, because here's the standard smoke going down at the bottom of Banana from the, that we expect to see from the CT side. He's supposed to be with Starks positioning, and Starks is actually going to get left alone, which has now become a bread and butter hold for the CT. I mean, you leave one guy controlling Banana behind those smokes, and then you can constantly smoke the bottom of Banana from mid. So if Navi have four players here, if LDLC try and push through, they have an optimal defense to deal with that push when it decides to come through. So. Right now, it looks looking like LDLC actually have a bit of a smoke round of their own in mind. Yeah, certainly setting up in, in second mid somewhere and just wondering if they can. Yeah, so this is going to be the smoke for Truck into Pit. There's nobody covering there, and Seuss is actually pushing pretty aggressively in the province. He could definitely be the guy to ruin this whole push. Seized here in the ninja corner, going to get flashed in. He takes down one, and Edward is there, also coming in with a good kill. And he's going to re-peak again. And LDLC get crushed in the middle. Fantastic round from Na'Vi. It's going to be 7-4 to four with Starix currently the top cracker, a guy we didn't even mention as a potential candidate. But, I mean, look across the board. Apart from Guardian, who's uncharacteristically not really doing Doing much at the moment the rest of navi is almost completely tied they're doing a really good job just playing as a team yeah it's very very clean work coming out from navi and that's exactly what you want to be seeing from them as well especially when you could consider them the, under the underdog in this match just barely but you could consider them the underdog i definitely would yeah so this is definitely i mean this is this is the start now for navi after that scary that bumpy road at the beginning they are managing to turn it around and again navi not fully committing to their usual push right where they just go full full yellow down mid and try and get control of that and cut the the T advance in half. They do poke forward a little bit, get eyes into second mid, and then back off. So Navi just making sure that LDLC can't get too comfortable. And they also get the information as to are LDLC bought up or is it going to be pistols? This is Navi just throwing their weight around on the map to make sure that LDLC cannot get too much confidence. Yes, five rounds in a row currently for Navi. They haven't uh, dropped a single one for a while. They just need to keep that up. It's a good shot through the smoke from Kirishima, though, to take down Edward. It's going to be a little bit annoying. And, uh, it's a good bit of a missed uh, off shot there. So he's trying to fall back to safety. The C set 75 follow up, and I think shot should be shot in the back any second. And there is Guardian picking it up. Now. Navi doubling the round score of LDLC, which is uh, which is good news. They're not that far away. Another three in a row here, and they'll be in a they'll be in a good spot. What do LDLC have to show for it though? What could they do at this point to to switch it up? They haven't done too many elaborate B pushes where you know they haven't tried to fake out Navi that much. They've actually just tried to get Navi to use some grenades and then they pushed aside. Mm -hmm. Now they right now Navi though what they're doing is this. This push right here from Navi, three members going into Banana is designed to stop any kind of early aggression coming out from LDLC. But, L I mean, Navi so far have really taken a lot of control as far as Banana is concerned, and LDLC are forced then into mid, second mid, into apartments. 
Navi even have somebody lurking up there right now, Edward in bedroom. We see him do this every now and again. So this is definitely Navi trying to be unpredictable in how they're holding, and LDLC are kind of struggling with adapting to that. You know, do you go for the ultra aggro? Do you just try and rush somewhere? It seems like Navi have been able to deal with that so far. The smoke rounds, Navi managed it as well. So the LDLC right now, I think, are just kind of trying to see if they can't find a pick somewhere. But that's another thing Navi are doing very well right now. They're really not giving many opportunities for LDLC to get an early kill to create oh. options for themselves. LDLC are going to come through the middle, and there's going to be a three-way cross crossfire waiting for them. They're setting up the smokes for second mid and everything else. Flashbangs on through. There's three members here for Navi, and right now they're getting all the kills. See Steven Burning, Kirishima alive. It's going to be happy left here. One on four. Not much of a chance there. LDLC picked the wrong time to go for that mid push. It's kind of hard for them to know as well, but we could clearly tell that Navi had the perfect three-way crossfire in that middle area. It's so hard, even with the smokes when there's that many people holding. So, um, I don't know. I would still, I would still love to see LDLC go for, for like a B split through Archway and then through Banana and see if you can't just make that opening. Use the smokes to smoke off Library and you know make sure you can get through to Arch, kill mm -hmm. the guy if he's there and then go to B. I really feel like they need to, to test this B-bomb site just a little bit more. Yeah, but look at what Navi are doing now once again. You know, this is what's making LDLC's life very difficult. It's not like Navi are running the same thing round after round. Now Zeus has an op of his own. It's a double op setup on Inferno, something we don't see every day. If ever, really. It's a very rare thing, actually, to see two scoped rifles like this for the CT side. So, Navi, they're really keeping it eclectic here. Edward, however, there's the kind of timing that they need here, LDLC. A bit of a wink from Lady Luck, but Shox finds the first kill on Edward. And now Navi are just evaporating. Smith and MBK pick up another two frags. Excellent. Exactly what LDLC needed. Guardian flicking in there with a shot on Happy, which is good, but there's still a couple of people down, and they're actually, they've actually just put everyone on A. They just hope that LDLC are going to come, but right now the French team is making a really smart decision, just ending up at the B-bomb site. They have read this situation quite well from, uh, from Navi's point of view, and they're just going to walk right in and uh, put the bomb down. It's going to be essentially a free round from here on out. It's nothing that Navi could do to try and retake it. Now, because we're the 14th round, I wouldn't be surprised to try anyway, because they have nothing to lose. They have an inf infinity of money. They can just go in and throw all the rifles away. It doesn't matter. They might as well try it in case LDLC make a big mistake. Exactly. LDLC are the ones who are right now strapped for cash. So any kind of gun that they can get off of uh, LDLC at this point is bonus for Navi. See, so slowly working his way up here. Question is, when does Shox decide to peak? There you go. Perfect timing. Gets the job done. And this shot through the smoke oh. from Smith. Dead on onto Guardian. No saving that. That gun. This is now LDLC on five rounds. So this is it. This is this is where LDLC can feel pretty comfortable. They've succeeded in their first half as far as they're concerned. Absolutely. And that's how that's how quickly it changes. You're seven rounds in a row for, for Navi. They look unstoppable. They had some really good rounds where they actually didn't lose anybody at all. And then LDLC did sneak in that last round and then they're good to go. Thumbs up and now Navi have to not let this last round go. That would be horrendous. We're in the 15th round, the last of the half here. If you're just joining us, it's the first match, so it's the perfect timing. LDLC try and boost up inside that smoke and see if they can look over it here. And they will be successful. Smith gets that shot. Edward waiting up here this time. He has the slightly better timing. Guardian misses the flick. Can he get the nose? He can't. And he's not quick enough with the pistol. He's going to go down. Happy just tanking on inside there. Going to take down Edward next. Seized falls and it's Zeus left in a one on four. LDLC winning every single duel apart from the first one up in the apartments. And just like that. Happy will get the final frag, and that was great work from Happy up in apartments. This is also the ability that LDLC have to just speed up, a bit like VP. Get that entry frag, and then just speed up everywhere across the map. While Navi are confused, while Navi are trying to rotate around to plug the gap wherever that man got killed, LDLC are pouncing on them, catching them out in the open. And, you know, from the look on Zeus's face right now, you know, he's got to be wondering, how did we let that get out of our hands there at the end? Because they were on track to having a very successful first half. It wasn't until just the, they were looking at the yeah. finish line, Anders. They couldn't quite get across it. And I actually, you know, I actually think that's what we started off talking about as well, is that they are an aggressive team on that terrorist side, LDLC. Oh, yeah. It's well known. Actually, it's, it's been a well-known property of a lot of French teams going all the way back in the beginning of Global Offensive as well. Clan Mystic, when they were still a thing, uh, did it too. Just playing super aggressively once they get the first engagement. They can play it slowly up until that point, you know, set up smokes and everything else, but it feels like, you know, they just flick on a, a switch and that's it. Then, then the, they, they don't really stop. They keep going. And it's hard to deal with, apparently. You can see Navi having some issues here at the very end. Now, I think this takes us from a situation where Navi, if they had won this 11-4, they could potentially be okay with losing the pistol round and maybe still win the game. I think now winning the pistol round for Navi is an absolute must. Winning the pistol round would put them at 12-6, and even then, I, I would not be surprised if LDLC make a full comeback. That wouldn't even be remotely surprising. Yeah, because then LDLC still have a cushion. You know, This isn't a 14-1 yeah. win at the end of the half where you go into it and you're like, 
okay then, right? We are allowed zero errors. LDLC got more rounds than they needed here in this T side, so they're going to have a great cushion going into their CT side, which is impeccable. They are a very polished team when it comes to Inferno, one of the best in the world on this map, flat out, along with Fnatic. So this is definitely going to be now a very tough struggle here for Na'Vi. And this leads you to think, I mean, if LDLC start off this series picking up Inferno, the next map is Dust2, and that can also go LDLC's way. I mean, yep. Na'Vi right now are definitely battling back from behind. They have well, to find a way to get back into this match and be relevant again. The one factor that could, that could make Dust2 a favorable map for Na'Vi would be Guardian, and he's currently not really showing up at all. He's just played 15 rounds and got four kills, so that can't, if it goes Dust2, and it obviously will at some point, um, that can't happen. Guardian has to wake up before then, and that's not impossible that he could, but it'd be even better if he wakes up right now. We're watching him charge down the middle here. It's the 16th round, second half is coming up now, and LDLC, if they win this pistol, that will be a catastrophe for Na'Vi. Smith, he's shaking for the peak. He takes a little bit of damage, but he has to close to stop that push from coming through. This is all for, this is, Na'Vi are perfectly content with that though, however. They put that man up there at top banana to see if they can put some pressure on the B defense, see if they could force out any days that were here, and they did just that. Now, NBK was lying in wait in apartments. He's actually got them cut up. He knows that Guardian made it past, however, so he's going to be communicating that to his teammates. Shoxi rotating in through Arch to potentially set up the pincer, but it's NBK actually getting caught out and taking massive damage. He will make it out in time, but that was way too close. He's got one health left. That's almost criminal. And they're going to make it through Archway here as Smith goes down to Star Eight Shocks now inside the bombsite. But MBK comes back for revenge with one health. He picks up two kills. And he's going to train on right here, looking for another one. They're controlling the bomb, so everyone is rotating in. Edward finally ends NBK, but it might have been just a little bit too late right here. It's a two on three. He's still got 35 seconds to try and reclaim the bomb. But in one second, they're gone from the map. Happy and Shocks finish it off. We've got to give credit to MBK. He lost that battle initially. He took 99 damage, then jumped out of the windows to second mid, went back and back, stabbed them, got two instant headshots. That's incredible. Uh, that's just some, some inspiring play. And, you know, it was mentioned going into this best of three as well. You know, MBK, a player that we have to keep our eyes on, he can be a key factor in LDLC winning. And him having a huge pistol round like that is definitely going to be the proper start here for LDLC. They're going to have all the confidence. I mean, a plus on that, not only is he getting those kills, but the initial information that he gained from peeking from Boiler, spotting so many members of Na'Vi, allowed for his team to instantly react and get in position to stop that push coming through. So just really well done there by MBK. Pretty much, you know, giving his team that round. Now Na'Vi, they go for the pistol armor by, and we have to see, it was a brutal beat and brawl in the first half. Can they do it again here? And Guardians already found the one dig on NBK. That is always a good start, isn't it? Also, it just puts the other team back on an even keel, just in serving them notice that we're not to be taken lightly. But Suit will go down. Max 7 here, attempt from Kiyoshima. Not the optimal range for it, but he does some little bit of damage, just tickling Navi there. Shocks up on the balcony, waiting. And Navi, now the advantage is gone, and a little bit more time has been burned off the clock. But for Navi, this is still a lot of time to work with. Yeah, they still feel comfortable going in. 20 seconds, wow. Guardian gets another frag. The Deagle shots. He is doing big damage here to LDLC. That's two guns down now for the Frenchman. CT side, and now they have to be wondering, you know, is this going to be a B push or not? It looks like an LDLC, without seeing the bomb, they are going to make the play. They're going to keep two on A, and Navi are actually running out of time here. 20 seconds left, and there you go. The peak comes out, and it's going to be Kiyoshima. He needs to land this shot. He has to stop this bomb from getting passed onto the site, and it's practically delivered to him. He spots out Edward, the last man alive here for Navi, and Kiyoshima takes that fight and wins it. LDLC will survive the second round of the half, and now Navi are stumped. That was so close. I mean, did you notice how close it was that Happy actually died in that B bomb sign to the C said? He got instantly dinked in the face. So that could have been the, the other opening here. I mean, that would have forced the remaining members of LDLC to move over here, and it would have been pretty bad for them. Kiyoshima, though, doing a great job in the pit right now, just uh, keeping them in it. They did lose a lot of rifles there. So, I mean, Navi have a chance, not in this round probably, but in the upcoming round to force a pretty, a pretty fast eco. And that's the only way Navi are going to win this, is continuously keep being LDLC echoing. If, if the French team have at any point get all their members above 4,000, I think it's Navi won't be able to win that many consecutive rounds. Exactly right. You know, so if they can get that buffer, so this is going to be, I mean, it's the 19th round now where it's all going to go down here. Navi pretty much on Glocks in a single P250 now. So not a huge amount of firepower on their side. The idea for them is pretty much going to be 
the mad dash. Just run onto that site and see if you can get a plant. See if you can get that bonus money for us in the next round. But the crossfire is here. Happy already picking up two with the help of Smiths. And there is going to be Yoshima. He will miss the final frag. Smiths will pick it up. And still, the job well done there for LDLC. That's the kind of bounce back round that they needed, keeping everybody alive. And yeah, Shoxy level good. with the keyboard is right. Look at that. It's practically perpendicular to him. He believes in, you know, space, you know, right? You know, just economy of space. Are you not saying, taking up a lot of side, you know, not a lot of, so not taking up a lot like of space a, on the desk. Is it a thing, sweary thing? Is that what you're saying? Is it, is it, you know, getting the energy levels just right around his, his monitor, stuff like that? <laughs> I don't know, Sam. I don't believe, believe in that, but it's all right. What I believe in is MBK with a Nova. Thank you, MBK. We don't see that gun often enough. RV with not that many grenades either. But this is enough to get into a bomb site, but the problem is once you get in and get the bomb down, you won't have any grenades left to try and de prevent the CTs from retaking it, and that is also a factor. So I mean, if Navi can somehow use only half their grenades now and save half for later, that's really good, but it's going to be a little bit rough, I think. And LDLC are playing super passively as well. Um, most forward position is at the top of Anana right now uh, for MBK. Uh, and he, he does kind of have to get close right here. He's going to hold these, uh, these aggressive angles, essentially, because with the shotgun, you're only effective up to a couple meters, so you need to be right there in your opponent's face. Of course, it's near instant death if NBK hits that shot, so we'll see if he's going to be able to hold it there. But Na'Vi, 44 seconds left on this clock, and they're making noise here towards mid. It's looking like it's going to be A here for Na'Vi. The pack is making its way up towards Arch, and it's Smith currently holding the angle. Nade is going to go in to smoke him off, however, and this is going to be some information for him. Question is now, do Na'Vi decide to push through Arch to decide to wrap towards this A site. Yeah, they are going through Arch all the way into CT spawn. Happy's in the perfect position to get the one he keeps spraying. Edward very low on health and he's trying to escape back up, but there's all the LDL team members are right here. Kiyoshima through the smoke, he's gonna pick up the one and now Navi, 14 seconds, 13 seconds. They need to get this bomb down right now. It's a three on four and actually Smith's burns alive. Kiyoshima finds a great headshot shooting through the box here. Five seconds left and Navi finally putting the bombs down. Guardian running and gunning and now it's down to NBK. He's got the shot Gun. He's got the beard. He's got the perfect uh, set of uh, equipment here to be the angry farmer. But he's going to switch it up with a M4A1 instead, and he's going to try and get in here. He's got Kit picked up currently. Gets the one, but Starix comes in with a great second kill. And it's going to be a double for him in the round. Still top fragging on the team with 16. Edward on 16, and then Happy on 16. They're all tied for top fragging at the moment. A hugely critical round for Navi. And Guardian in particular, he's having just some big rounds now once we've swapped over the half. I mean, not really present on the map throughout their CT side for Na'Vi, but Guardian now here on this T side, with, along with the Deagle and the AK, he's been doing fantastic work. Now we just have to see, you know, when he gets that AWP, what's going to be possible. But Na'Vi, they're back in the lead now with 10 rounds on the board. LDLC still had the money to go for a buy, but shoxy has got the AWP. And I don't know, Anders, is he feeling godlike today? I mean, yeah, we've seen that one highlight reel from up there. I wouldn't be surprised. Kiyoshima's down in the pit, and this is the wrong timing to be pulling out a grenade. You need the M4 for this, and he's not going to get that shot. Edward with a follow-up headshot, and then two in return from NBK and Smiths, and now the bomb is going to go down rather quickly this time, but look at the rotation from LDLC. They're here very fast indeed, and now we have all right off the plants, but yeah, another one going to go into the pit. That's great. Two in the pit is much better than two inside the bomb site, but this boost right here from LDLC is interesting. They want to see if they can look over the smoke, try and see if they can get some kills in the pit here. Grenades raining out. Shoxy looking for the opening, but it's going to be Starry's and MBK with the follow-up. It's a 2-1-2. Two -two. That bomb is ticking away. They need to move, and they need to do it now. Shots alone, and he gets cross-fired. It's a triple kill from Captain Ahab himself. It's Edward currently top fragging at 19 kills. Don't say we didn't warn you. Ah, Edward is really here, man. This is sick. Navi, two rounds that work perfectly and a little bit on the timing as well there. Kyoshima not able to have his rifle out. That's pretty much what prompted there. Navi, you know, Kyoshima should have his gun out at that point in time to be able to at least pick up the first man coming in from balcony. That guy jumping out there from Navi, he's there to draw the fire so that the rest of his teammates can actually get out into pit. The fact that Kyoshima doesn't have his gun out and then loses that duel opens the floodgates and we just see what we see what happens there with Navi managing to crash onto that site and keep control of it. Now LDLC, this is starting to get to be a difficult position for them. They're now forced to eco, and when you're on CT side, that's the worst case scenario. If you have to go to pistols, you're limited in your options, despite the fact that we've seen them be so very effective with them in the past. I mean, you can't do that every round. Still a very tight game here. LDLC are not far behind. That's a nice opening from Shox. 
takes that kill with the P250. That grenade, though, following him back and somehow did very little damage. Looked like he should have done a little bit more. MBK also picking up on Seized here. And now Navi really have to make sure they don't give up anymore. Losing an Antico at this point, would, that would very likely be the thing that breaks the Navi team. That's so hard to come back from mentally as well. You know you were supposed to get a free round out of it, and then all of a sudden, LDLC almost buys their way into equalizing the score. Now we won't have any money if they lose this round either. Yeah, that's where it, I mean, this is definitely one of those very important rounds here. And Shoxi has that rifle to work with as well. And he's holding at a very strong position over on pit and A. So if Navi, unless Navi can clear him out of there instantly, get rid of him just immediately. They do have an, a Molotov on Starks. He spots out Shoxi. Wouldn't be surprised to see him take it here and try and use it, but he's going to get picked up. The headshot comes in from Shoxi. That is Starks down, but Guardian instantly replies, takes Shoxi out of the pit. Nine seconds left here. There are, There is no time. It is going to be Zeus. He's got just enough time to get the plant, but he gets faded off of it. Now all of a sudden, Smith can win the round if he stays alive, and he does just that. The way that worked out for LDLC, I mean, Navi is incredible. They do manage to get into these scenarios with only like 20 seconds left. They go for a push onto the site, but that's what happens when it goes wrong. You leave yourself so little room to work with. And the really cool thing is that NBK actually realized that was going to be an A push. The second the one player out of Banana started rotating back, you could tell the minimap, and he didn't rotate the long way around from CT1. He actually just ran down Banana to backstab him. That was also a very, very key factor, because MBK had been delaying just a little bit, or if he'd rotate the other way around, there would have been a bomb plant opportunity at the end there. Even with four seconds, he could have done it. But NBK was just a little bit too fast on the rotation, so really nice read on his part as well. That's now 11 to 10, and LDLC with a, with a very big round. As far as LDLC, I mean, LDLC right now, they are giving Navi a bit of a taste of their own medicine, not really putting up much of a fight in Banana. It seems things how they're keeping uh, MBK pretty much hard on that B site, but they did go for the gamble at the beginning, having four players on A, making sure that if Navi were to come in here fast, come in here quickly, they would have just overwhelming strength on their side of the map. Navi now, however, I mean, we pretty much got another 40 seconds before we're going to see them make a play here. <laughs> it feels like at least, because they were getting past that 50 second mark. They're still gathered up at top mid. They will have the firepower, but Smith pushes around that angle. That sets it up for Kyushima to peek out from New Corner as well, and they are going to be able to have a very solid crossfire here. Although, Guardian, that shot on Kyushima, that gave Navi a chance. He legged him through the wall. He actually hit him through the wall then as he was jumping away. There's one tiny chance here, which is taking down NBK in the bomb side. They have the Molotovs, and you can see Edward is setting up to throw one out. It's not going to be what Edward is holding. There's no way. But they might end up having a smoke with it. No, it's going to be down in CT spawn. So NBK is still in a great position here to pick them off as they come into the bomb side. This is going to be rough. NBK takes the first, takes the second, goes for a third one, and just barely misses it. Bomb plant opportunity with eight seconds left. If Staris can win this, that is going to be an incredible clutch for him. That's, that will bring Na'Vi uh, a lot of momentum. Exactly, especially when Na'Vi, this is everything for them. I mean, they did get a bomb plant on a force-up round, on a force buy, but NBK getting a little ahead of himself, putting his teammates in a vulnerable position. It's going to be Shoxi walking around the corner, takes the fight, and Starks can't get the job done. He cannot land the follow-up shot. Shoxi with a gold spray will get rid of him, but that was still... A bit sloppier than it needed to be there. NBK, he gets the first two frags, and he could have backed off at that point. He decided, he made the decision to stay there and just end it. And that actually gave Starx the chance to actually to, to take that round, to clutch it out 1v2. Yeah, Starx trying to position himself in a way that was an, like an off angle, like we've been talking about with Jordan from, uh, from Cloud9. It's, it's, you know, simply something where you, you put yourself in a position that's not the most obvious one. Because the most obvious position there would have been to try and hide back on new boxes or in construction. And those are usually the places LDLC will be looking for absolutely first. So he's just trying to throw them off a little bit. It could have worked. It didn't this time. Now Navi have to eco. It's definitely not over yet for either team, but um, and LDLC have a good lead right now. They're in a good position to take this first map. Uh, now they have some control again. They're going to be able to have some money as well, despite the fact they lost three rifles that last round. They are going to have a little bit of a buffer, but NBK is going to find Guardian, who is speaking about at Top Banana, and the rest of Navi are still gathered here. So the question is, are they going to run the bomb back? And yes, they will. Navi are basically the whole game plan here for Navi is to get the plant. They need that extra money. NBK might be giving away his position here. However, Seized is trained right on him. And the jump is going to confirm it. Seized tries to put the shot through, but NBK will find him first. And the rest of Navi now about to push through here for the A site. Kiyoshima waiting. Really good angle. Going to catch him through the smoke. And no issue at all. They don't lose anybody that round. It's NBK with a triple kill. 
just trying to get up on the scoreboard. But again, the whole LDLC team is pretty even in terms of frags. Nobody is lagging behind. And even now, we have even things out as Guardian has uh, stepped back into the game. It's still top fragging currently, Edward at 19 kills. But now, 12, 11. Now we aren't going to have too many more chances to break LDLC. They, they need to stop this economy right now. They need to kill them. LDLC going to force up if they lose this round, but then they need to win two consecutive rounds. That's that's Na'Vi's task here. Exactly right. I mean, Na'Vi right now, all of the pressure is on them. You've seen how difficult this position can be as well, but Na'Vi, they have the patience. Now the question is, what do LDLC do to, to mess with them? And this is one of those things. This is one of the ops, and Shaxi holding up here in apartments. This isn't a position he's used yet either. So Stark's walking in here. We can see him making sure that nobody pushes out from house. Is he going to expect Shaxi to be waiting right around the corner like that? Definite peekaboo moment here. They're trying to follow up on it as well. The wall bait coming in through from Edward, and Shaxi is going to make it out in one piece. That's so close. Right, they follow up with a Molotov just to try and force him back. They do have two left. So I was kind of wondering in the beginning if they were going to end up at B, just because they have three Molotovs to start with. And they did show some interest in burning that bomb site out a little bit earlier. That's definitely a possibility. Right now, they're rotating back through Arch, and they've got Smiths hiding on the corner, just looking through the brush that's right there. And he's going to get smoked off. So that's definitely a good, a valuable smoke. Then the Molotov to keep him out. Smiths just can't find any luck at all. But Hiroshima will pick up on that kill there. Edward is going to be going down and chucking the pit. Just being a little bit too strong right here. Seuss all alone. One on three. With just 29 seconds left. Trying to hide in the smoke. But Sharks is just a little bit omniscient almost. He sees everything. And it's going to be the triple kill here for the French superstar. 13 to 11. And they look supremely confident right now on LDLC's side. I mean, so smiles, banter. They've got it all right now. And it looks like, actually, we may have a tactical pause coming in here. So this... This scenario here is actually Navi basically saying, okay, hold on, this is too crucial a map. We have to take a break, and we have to actually take a moment here to consider and talk things yeah. over. And I do think that the, the French team took their headsets off, so we won't be revealing anything at all. Mm -hmm. So don't blame us for talking a little bit casually here. But so far, this has turned out to be an intense match. I, I mean, if this had gone differently, if, if this had been LDLC actually in a position where they just ended up you know, finishing 16-10 on this map, I wouldn't have been too surprised. Because uh, they are, you know, I, I would say they're the second best team in the world they're playing uh, mm -hmm. Inferno currently. So, so that wouldn't have shocked me too much. The fact that Navi are making this much of a fight of it is kind of uh, intriguing. I'm very pleased so far with the, uh, not with necessarily with the outcome. I mean, I did predict LDLC to take this, but Navi are really putting up a fight right now. They're showing that, you know, if a couple, I mean, there have been so many close rounds throughout the first half and throughout this second one. I mean, the first half right there, it was a total all-out brawl, just force by after force by from both teams until eventually Navi just barely managed to get control back. But this has been just so close. A couple things go differently either way, and Na'Vi could be the one sitting in the lead right now, LDLC on the eco. So LDLC, as far as I'm concerned right now, they look just supremely confident to me going into the rest of this map. They need three rounds to take the first one in this best of three, and then they go into dust two. Now, do you think, I mean, and they're obviously discussing something over at the LDLC side. Mm -hmm. You've got to wonder if they're, if, if they're thinking about, do we just keep doing what we've been doing? Because it's working, obviously, on the second half. It seems to be working. But I mean, they could throw in some aggression if they really feel like it. Shox was up in the apartments last time, but you, there's room for even more if they want to. Obviously, they're, they're having a, a pretty intense discussion. Uh, right now, basically, they're just like, well, you know, they're, 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 they're on the brink right now. We know that they're going to have... Uh, I mean, basically, we have control of this situation. There shouldn't be anything that they can do. I mean, it's basically confidence talk that they're going through because everything is going right right now for them. Why can't you lip read in French, Samla? Why did we hire you to begin with? Oh, I need to focus here. I need to focus, but you know. I was gonna uh, say, we need we need some help with that stuff. All right, I think the admin came around and told them, "Back in your seats, headsets on. Let's get this game underway." It was definitely uh, turned out to be interesting. I think Navi never really stood up. They just they just sat where they were. It was Seas who called for the pause, so it was, it was Navi's turn to do it here. I'm curious as well. But, you know, you, you hired me because I'm hardcore, Anders. I eat pain for breakfast. I heard Thorin say that. Say what? Say that? Say not as hardcore as Semla. Oh, that line. Oh, okay. I, was, I thought he said that line. I was like, okay, then Thorin's on the next level. He's mind reading me. This is over. I, I just can't compete anymore with him. Of this time. Happy hiding by the sandbags, and now we are coming for him, but a great new time flashbang. Happy still going to pick up two kills, and now the Molotov to slow them down, but Seuss decides, you know, if I can withstand lightning, maybe fire is going to be the same thing, but it's not. It's a different element, and it's not, it's not, not as cool here. Starix 
going to be walking on in. Up at Foils, he's looking for the headshot, he's going to get it even flashed. That's pretty impressive, and it actually turns it into a winnable round now for the terrorist side. If they can just take down Smith, who's over here with the AWP, they're trying to get close. He hits the shoulder shot, I think that was on C. C's going to just elect to try and put the bomb down, but backup's coming. Shocks is coming in from a from banana, and it's also C's going down to Kiyoshima through CT spawn. So now Starix is in a very tough position all the way in the back, and Kiyoshima is landing some good shots right here to finish the round. It was looking tricky for a moment. There was an eco round as well from uh, from Navi, but even about the bomb plant, they have plenty of money mm -hmm. and uh, they are going to be buying, but it's it's getting late right now for Navi. They can't afford to lose any more rounds. No, they certainly cannot. I mean, this is it now on the brink, but Smith really played that round very well. He didn't overextend. He got the info that they were pushing up behind it, and then he just decided to hold a fairly safe angle. If, if Navi, they would have had to rush all the way into construction to find him at that point. Smith sat back and waited for the rotation to come in. There's pretty much textbook play from him, so very nicely done there by LDLC, and that's clearly showing that they've, they've got that confidence. They've got the will to end this right here. It's Na'Vi now who are desperately fighting to find any kind of edge. And they are going to be pushing up into apartments here, Na'Vi. So they are getting some of that control. Edward taking point on short, and we'll see exactly how much they can find to work with here. As Na'Vi, they haven't exactly made it clear where they want to go quite yet. They do have a lot of Molotovs, though. Three Molotovs right now, Anders. There's going to be some fire and flames, and there you go. Check the corner, Zeus. Make sure nobody's lurking. Make sure nobody's hiding. Yeah, really good use. Counter Molotov coming out from Kiyoshima. Just making sure no one is hiding in boiler room. And Smith, he sees the gun barrel and a straight headshot on Guardian. And the flashbang follow up. And Seuss couldn't actually capitalize on that. Smith's going to repeat. And got to be careful if they don't lose more players. Seuss will take down Kiyoshima. And Smith's going to go with a CZ75. He wants to chase this, but he's not going to be able to connect with the shot. Tries again, and somehow they make it out. But then Happy's there to pick it up over at quad. Double kill for Happy. Seuss are left alive on two health in a one on four. Long, prolonged battle here. And a nice shot from Seuss. Oh, very nice flick there by Zeus. But this is still nearly an unwinnable position for him because that bomb is dropped. He's going to be able to... He could potentially sneak forward to pick it up. LDLC again holding these off angles. But NBK, bottom mid, make sure that Zeus cannot back around and try and wrap around from a different angle. Just boxes him in, and there we have it. LDLC now one round away from picking up the first map. We were, we were wondering if coming into this match, because of all the uh, craziness that was going on last night, somehow affected them, if they were going to be, you know, distracted, unfocused, thinking about something else. But it seems like they definitely aren't. They had a bit of a rough time somewhere in the middle of the first half, but then they really came back. And, and they played a style that we kind of expect LDLC to do on Inferno. Very, very strong team. It's just one round away from them taking us to a second map here. And this is definitely the expected outcome. Navi, though, they've... They've made a, a great run of it, and it's not over yet. They can still do it, but now they need to win a lot of consecutive rounds and force an eco. It's a nice flick from Smith. He's going to fall back. He has a little bit more of a chance. Going to put up the Molotov here. He's being chased down by Edward, but now makes it a double for himself. He's going to run through the Molotov with a C set in hand. He turns around at the wrong time to get taken down. Guardian and Seas with some returns here. Seuss is going to spray down Kiyoshima, but then everyone just has the wrong timing. It's all on Guardian here. It's a one on two, and he has to go and pick up the bomb as well. That's horrendous. Exactly. Once again, this is like three rounds in a row now where LDLC have managed to drop the bomb in a perfect position for them to hold it. At this point now, Guardian, he has to worry about a potential flank, a potential backstab coming in. He knows that one member of LDLC is sitting on that bomb. Where is the other one? Is he pushing down Banana? That's what Guardian is thinking right now. But eventually, he's going to have to take this fight. He's going to have to figure it out. And NBK, I think he spotted mid arch, but NBK will land the shot. And LDLC will finish this first map. 16 11. Not too shabby be a start here for a best of three semi-final. An incredibly strong performance from the French team. Kiyoshima actually top ranking at the end of 23 kills, and he wasn't even in the contest early on, but at the end, he really just stepped it up and got a lot of uh, a lot of really uh, solid kills towards the end. So that's, that's amazing. LDLC, I mean, I think it was the expected outcome. They were going to win in Inferno now. The, the worry is, are Navi going to step it up on Dust 2? That's the question that I'm wondering about as well, because they seem to be, they, they seemed up top to be expecting, you know, uh, confidence in Navi on Dust 2, but I've always felt that Navi were kind of Touch and, go, touch and go on the map, like they aren't quite there with the level, but I mean, it's it's here, it's picked. They're going to have to step up. It's just that LDLC, when it comes to that map, Smiths, Smiths is the X factor for LDLC. Yeah. That seems to be one of those maps where sometimes you will have players that they just have a map that they excel on, that is their map, they just always mm -hmm. dominate on it. Well, Dust to a Smiths map. Are Navi going to be able to handle him? Guardian has to.